Okay, so Squid Game has a pretty big ending. Not only does it reveal a big twist about one of the fan favourite characters, but it also sets up a lot of things for the future that I'll no doubt be milking in 400 videos over the next 3 days. Now, though it seems pretty straightforward, we actually have a lot of theories about what's going on, including how Ilnam planned his death, why he could still be alive, and the way that the frontman is selected. Hopefully, after you watch this video, it'll give you a new appreciation for the show and make you think that everything isn't as simple as it seems. Yes, it's all connected. Now, the series ends with Gihun going to see Ilnam as he lies in his deathbed. Though Gihun initially wants to kill him, he agrees to play one last game with the old man, in which they bet on the fate of a homeless man out in the cold. Ilnam says that should no one help the man come the stroke of midnight, that he will win, and in doing so it'll show just how selfish that humanity is. However, if someone does come and help him, it'll prove that the mentality he's had his entire life is wrong, and that Gihun's way of looking at things is indeed right. Just as the clock hits 12, the police and a good Samaritan arrive to help the man, but Ilnam dies exactly as the clock strikes midnight. It's a very poetic scene, and it starts a brand new day with Gihun carrying a brand new mind state. However, what if this was all actually a game in itself, and Ilnam planned it all out perfectly, including the exact time that he would die? Well, it's an idea that's stuck with me since I first watched the show. Everything just seems so neat, and the fact that things happen down to the exact second seems very, very suspicious. The clock is constantly ticking away in the background, and it gets focus brought to it every couple of minutes within the scene to remind us about midnight. This is similar to the games themselves, in which we had constant attention brought to the time limits. Upon it hitting all the zeros, those still in play were killed, and 0000, zero, zero, zero is of course another way of saying midnight. Just in the same way that the players were killed when this number was hit, Ilnam dies too, and it is possible that he's planned this entire thing out. Now the first thing we have to look at is how Ilnam would orchestrate things so perfectly. Now personally, I believe that the water is in fact the key to it. There are two scenarios that I could see happening, and that is that it's either laced with a poison that takes exactly 25 minutes to kill someone, or that it's a sedative that does the same thing. Now let's look at the scene for ourselves and how it's set up. Gihan has sent a card with an address on it, and he goes to it to find Ilnam there. If he doesn't go, then Ilnam doesn't have to enact this plan, and thus he can just relax and not go this route. However, if Gihan does show up, then Ilnam can ask for a glass of water, which will give him exactly 25 minutes until his death. Now after drinking the water, Ilnam asks to play a game and says that come midnight that they will know the outcome. However, should Gihan have given him it slightly later, then he could say 5 past and so on and so forth. The clock is clearly there for a reason, and so much attention is brought to it in the scene that it just seems like Ilnam has it there for himself. Just after giving Ilnam the water, Gihan turns around to look at it, and we can see that it's 36 minutes past, so Ilnam would have taken a drink likely on the 35 minute mark. In the scene, Ilnam seemingly uses it as a means to play the game, as it adds a ticking clock to the scenario, but he could also be using it to let him know exactly how much time he has left. Now because of this, it could also open up the possibility that he is still alive, and that this entire thing is somewhat of another game that we'll talk about later on in the video. Much in the same way that there could be poison within the water, there might also be a sedative that makes someone appear dead. Couple this with the heart rate monitors, and it could be possible that they were either programmed to flatline once whatever's in the water took hold, or that Ilnam's heart rate is so low that it's practically undetectable. This means that he might not be dead, and this entire scenario could all be a game within itself. The situation is a weird one, with Ilnam being in a hospital bed at the top of a tower, and we also know that the front man is indeed there as he appears after Gihan has left, and there's also of course the homeless man. Ilnam says he's been sitting there for hours, but this position seems very convenient. If our theory is right, then the game runners could have kidnapped someone, drugged them, and then dumped them on the street immediately opposite to the building, so that Ilnam could play this final game along with Gihan. Water is also potentially symbolic, as if our theory from our last video is right, then Ilnam has used it to try and get out of things before. Just before the marbles game, it seems like the character has wet himself, but there's an empty bottle of water right by his head. Potentially, he poured this over himself to make himself seem weak, so that he wouldn't be picked for the marbles, and this would mean that he'd either get a free pass, or he could pretend to be executed in order to avoid the bridge game. Now where the theory about him still being alive falls down is that the front man closes his eyes and he looks out over the city. 
He remembers their conversation after the marbles game and it very much feels like a final farewell. Giving someone water as they lie on their deathbed is also seen in many cultures as a final act of kindness, which this moment definitely comes across as. Though I do think Ilnam is dead, I also think that he may have orchestrated the full thing with the water and there is a lot to think about. Now if you're enjoying the video so far, we'd massively appreciate the thumbs up as it goes a long way to helping out the channel. If this is your first time here, then welcome to the Heavy Squid Game Show. I'm your host Paul, aka Cole Milkington. Now let's get into the rest of the theories. Now in the series, we learn that the games have been going on for decades. For years and years and years, there have been players selected, which have been whittled down until there's just one. At the end of episode 5, Huang Jun Ho comes across the file for his brother, and we learn near the end of the series that he's actually the front man. But why is it just him who's running the show when there's been so many other players? Well, potentially the ending of the series gives us a big clue towards why it's only the front man who's remained in an authority position. At the end of the series, we watch as Gihan comes across another card from the recruiter and he calls it just as he's about to board the plane to go and see his daughter. Gihan ends up turning around to go after those in charge, but it could be that something similar also happened with the front man. Potentially, this second card is somewhat of a recruitment for those in charge and it's only once someone who wins calls it that they enter into another game in which they work their way into an authority role. Now, I would absolutely love it if this second game was true and that the next season revolved around Gihan returning to the island only to find himself as part of another game in which he was fighting to gain control of the organisation so that he could take them down. If it was offered up to him that the prize for next time is the chance to become the leader of the games, then this would give him the opportunity to stop them himself. Potentially, there have been several frontmen that we don't know about, and it's only recently that Inho took on the moniker. The person before him could have been taken down by Inho, only to have him step in and run the operation for himself under Ilnam's guidance. The show is of course a comment on capitalism, and it could very much be a metaphor for how the poor often just end up being integrated into the system once they get high enough up the ladder. Now, all three characters are people that shows the games over their families. Ilnam mentions his wife and children throughout the show, but they're not there at his deathbed, making me think that their relationship with the character fell apart because of his focus on the games. Inho has the opportunity to go off with his brother, but instead he shoots him to return to his authority role. Mirroring this, Gihon can go and meet his daughter, but instead he remains behind and misses his flight so that he can be entangled with the game's operation. It's a pretty sad finale because we now know that he sacrificed his happiness to ultimately go back into this thing that's ended up losing him his family in the first place. We have to remember that not only did Gihon lose his daughter, but he also lost his mother. Much in the same way that the authority figures in Squid Game lost out on their family, he's very much doing the same thing and because of this, it could put him on a path that leads to him becoming the new frontman or potentially even the new Ilnam. Due to the VIPs, it is possible that the Squid Games all take place in a number of countries and we know from the ending of episode 5 that we're barely just scratching the surface in terms of what's really going on. Either way, it is possible that Gihan is still in the game, he's just completely unaware of it. There may be a bigger one at play that we don't know about yet and I'd absolutely love to see that unveiled as we head into season 2. Now obviously, I'd also love to hear your thoughts so make sure you comment below and let me know. We've actually joined forces with BenQ to give away some Amazon gift cards and all you have to do is go on the post that's linked in the description and follow the instructions. If you're in the market for a brand new projector, we've also done a big review of the W1800i on our last Squid Game video and there's a 15% off voucher in the description below if you want to save some money and grab a brand new one. Now if you want to watch that full Squid Game video, it will be linked on screen right now. We've also got one breaking down all the hidden details in the series, including the easter eggs, foreshadowing and clues that something else is going on. If not, then thank you for sticking through this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you also enjoy the rest of your week. You take care of yourself mate, you've been the best, I've been Paul and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, peace.